from the General Council of NIPSA, which is the biggest trade union in the north, which agreed to send a message of solidarity and support to our protest. They say, they say there's no such thing as political policing. And they laugh at you when you talk about political policing. But then they send tens of Gardaí out to impose water meters on communities that don't want them. They say there's no such thing as political policing. And then in February, they have 10 days of dawn raids on people's homes with six, eight, ten Gardaí taking people out of their houses, 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, people who in no sense are a flight risk. They say there's no political policing. And then they leak to the media that we're going to face extremely serious criminal charges. They say there's no political policing. And then the revelations come out about Operation Mizzen, which is a secret spying operation run inside the Gardaí, spying on anti-water charges protesters because they're anti-water charges protesters directed by the Garda Commissioner's husband. They say there's no political policing. And then they deny the Anti-Austerity Alliance the right to collect money because, and I quote, the money will be used to facilitate protests. They say there's no political policing and now they have 27 people summoned for six weeks' time to appear here and in the children's court for false imprisonment because they sat down on a road. They say there's no political policing and then they've summoned Joan Collins and 12 other people because they protested peacefully against the anti-water, against the meters going in. They say there's no such thing as political policing. In reality, political policing is not the exception. Political policing is the rule. Whenever the interests of the 1% of the elite of the capitalist class in this country is challenged, well then the full force of the state is used. The repressive apparatus of the state is used to oppress the 99% on behalf of the 1%. That's what Maury Harrington... That's what Maury Harrington and the Rockport Five is a demonstration of. That's what the 23 jailed bin tax protesters are an example of. That's what all the building workers and other workers who were jailed for picketing down through the years are an example of. The exception is not political policing, it's the rule. But what's new here is the extent to which political policing is laid bare. The extent to which it's obvious when they're taking people who are campaigning, organizing against their austerity policy, when they're trying to put them in jail for long periods of time. And the reason for that, the reason it's laid so bare, bare is because their rule has been challenged. It's like Howard Zinn says, the problem is not civil disobedience, the problem is civil obedience. But from the point of view from the point of view of the state, of the elite, of the establishment in this country, the problem is most definitely civil disobedience. Yes? It's about the Georgetown protesters, yes. Yes, it's about the Crumlin protesters, yes, it's about all the rest. But above all, it's about the fact that a majority of people in this country right now are engaged in very effective mass civil disobedience. The majority of people who are simply refusing to pay an unjust austerity charge because they've decided not to pay it. That's what has them scared more than, more than anything else. The movement as a whole, the mass civil disobedience and the threat to their ability to impose their charges. I think we now have to prepare for more of this. We had a long, long march today and fair play to everybody for sticking with it. But we know We've got a Jobstown 27. We've got a Crumlin 13. How many other numbers are we going to have in the next number of weeks? Has the state taken a decision to go full force with repression to try to break our movement? And we have to prepare then for a defence. So Jobstown Not Guilty is about a united campaign of everybody standing together, community, political, legal campaign. 
And we're going to have a legal defense with the best possible lawyers to defend everybody to have our day in court and to win in court. But above all, what we need for all of these cases is a political campaign of defense, a campaign of solidarity, a campaign of mobilization, a campaign of our anti-water charges movement, our anti-austerity movement, together, collectively, to defend the right to protest for everybody. And so we're going to be back. We're going to be seeing a lot of this courthouse over the next year or year and a half. On the 29th of October, we have to stand with the young people, the under-18s, who will be appearing in the so-called Children's Court on the 29th of October. On the 2nd of November, we need a united protest of everybody, all the sections of the movement, those affected from Crumlin, who will be up here as well, and Jobstown, and the others, here on the 2nd of November, to express solidarity and support. Let me just leave you finally with my thanks to everybody involved in organizing and the mobilization that's taken place in Tala over the past week that has been incredible at such short notice. But leave you with a quote from James Connolly that suggests this big, big mistake that the establishment is making in going after us in the way that they're going after us at the moment. He says, if you strike us, imprison, or kill us, Hopefully we won't get killed. <laughs> Out of our prisons, we will still evoke a spirit that will thwart you. And mayhap raise a force that will destroy you. We defy you. Do your worst. Thank you. Before we go, I'd just like to say, I mentioned the information table.